A big dupe has just been exploited to clear over 50,000 US dollars or 1.5 trillion GP from the RuneScape 3 gold market. But this one doesn't require the same resources as other dupes have in the past. Duplication bugs have popped up frequently over the last few years in both Old School RuneScape and RuneScape 3. However, orchestrating those dupes required a lot of effort, thousands of hacked RuneScape accounts, and the know-how to bot on all those accounts to increase the stress on RuneScape's world servers and prompt a crash. This one is different, and was discovered by accident when my source tried depositing stuff in his bank. He noticed that when he was depositing his cash pile and his bank was full, all the other stuff he tried to deposit would drop to the ground. He realized that this allowed you to drop untradeable items that only have a destroy option, which you can't usually drop to the floor. This was the realization that eventually led to the biggest dupe of the year. So let's explore the thought process of the dupers. They know they can drop untradeable items that normally can't be dropped. Now the objective is to see how they might be able to profit from this. Because after all, they want to see if this knowledge can make them in real life money. So the task is to research all the untradeable items that can be converted into in-game GP. At first, they experiment with lucky items, treasure hunt caskets, and clue scroll pouches. Even while trying to leverage multiple bugs simultaneously, none of their ideas with these items lead to any profit. But then, a breakthrough. And a quick word from the video sponsor if you don't mind me doing so, thank you. There's a good reason why I paid for ExpressVPN well before they sponsored me. It's because they allow me to port my internet connection to another country. All I have to do is choose which country, turn it on, and then all of my internet access will be channeled through another internet connection. Why would you want to do this? Lots of reasons. Your internet service provider can see whatever you're doing on the internet and can go through your search history. Plus, they are legally allowed to sell that information to other companies. ExpressVPN stops this from happening. You can have your pick of shows and movies to watch. Ever wanted to watch Harry Potter on Netflix, but you can't? All you have to do is use ExpressVPN to port your connection to Germany, and there you go. Every movie immediately available. Not only that, ExpressVPN has best-in-class encryption, so you know your data is safe. The fastest speeds, the highest ranked VPN offering, and so easy to use. Even a goblin could do it. Hey. Get three months for free with expressvpn.com slash chemq or check the top link in the description. Signing up really supports my videos, so thank you. And thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. In September of 2018, RuneScape 3 introduced magical dice that you can claim from Maze Quest Caravan. When you roll them on the ground, you get some coins and a random clue scroll reward. They are intended to be a one-time reward for completing quests. As you gain quest points, you can claim more dice. At 325 quest points, you can collect one tier 4 magical dice. Because it's tier 4, each roll always gives you 2.5 mil and an elite clue scroll reward. And if you haven't ever claimed them before and you have 400 quest points, you can claim four tier four dice at a time. And if you've never rolled them before and you lose them, you can reclaim all four again from May. But what happens if you lose them through the banking feature? This is the way to profit from the discovery. Each time our duper banks, he's dropping all the dice on the ground, which normally wouldn't be possible. And May's quest caravan is literally only a few tiles away. So he can talk to her again, claim four more dice, and repeat. So instead of getting just four loots per account, he can stack up hundreds at a time. He says the RuneScape 3 bot detection is pretty good, so they didn't want to risk getting this method patched by programming a bot to do the banking and reclaiming claiming for him, because then it might get flagged and Jagex might detect that this is going on. So because he wasn't using a bot, he said that his hands hurt quite a bit after doing the method for a long time because he's been trying to make as much money as he can per hour. Now let's talk about how they opened the dice. Jagex made a safeguard in case anybody got their hands on more dice than they should. Jagex programmed the dice so the dice would disappear and May will stop letting you reclaim them. For example, if you had hundreds of dice in your inventory and clicked the dice four times, then you would get this error message, and the rest of the dice would disappear. However, last August, Jagex updated the dice so you can roll multiple of them in the same animation. And when you spam click the dice and roll a bunch at the same time, it seems to have allowed you to bypass that error message and you get a new one. This time, it says you have no more inventory space to roll more rewards. And when you get this error message, the game 
doesn't register that you've rolled any dice, and may still let you reclaim them. This is the second bug that allowed the dupers to make away with so much profit. But what was this profit comprised of? How did they make so much money? Don't forget that the dupers have a guaranteed roll of 2.5 million GP, in addition to the elite clue reward. One of the most profitable items from the clue rewards are dyes, particularly the blood dye, which goes for 9 billion GP per dye on the RS3 market. My source says he got many of these, which accumulated into a decent portion of his overall profit, that being around 1.4 trillion GP. Yep, you heard me right. 1.4 trillion GP was sold by these dupers to underground websites. Back when RS3 was RuneScape 2, that would have been an unfathomable amount of money. But today, I want to illustrate the high rate of inflation that has taken hold of RS3 recently. In fact, the swap rate from RuneScape 3 to old school is 10 to 1. I remember when a Santa hat was worth 180 mil. Now, it's worth 6 bill. Apparently, they didn't even sell all their items. The goal of this was to stay under the radar as much as possible and log as few trades as possible. Selling tons of stuff at once might have raised some flags over at Jagex HQ, so they only sold the most expensive stuff, like their blood dyes and the third age dyes. All in all, this dupe netted them $50,000. Definitely not one of the most profitable dupes in RuneScape history, but in the top 10 nonetheless. Let's talk about those other dupes, the ones I mentioned at the beginning of this video, because they were a lot more successful. But they also required a lot of time, effort, and accounts in order to orchestrate. Well back in 2020, an anonymous source sent me and Sir Pugger some live videos of a dupe taking place. They wrote to me, They are doing it again in World 122. And he attached this video. Now, it looks really strange all these accounts running together in unison. Let me explain what's going on with help from footage from Sir Pugger's video. The first step was to get a lot of accounts together in the same area. Then they would take their starting amount of gold and trade it to another account. Then that account would log out of the game. When you log out of the game, it's like a checkpoint for your account. Your account is given a save state with its stats, all the items in your bank, all the items in your inventory, and so on. And then you're disconnected from the server. Then that account would log back in, trade over the gold to another account, and stay logged in. Staying logged in means the save state still thinks that they have all those items in their inventory. But then if the server crashes, the account is simply disconnected from the server without updating the save state and telling it that all those items were taken off of the account. So all you had to do was trade over all the items from account to account, logging out of each one while the items were in the inventory, and continue until all of the accounts had logged out with the items in their inventory. But now what they had to do was crash the servers, which takes a lot more preparation. They could have started preparing for this dupe months in advance. Their first step was purchasing RuneScape accounts in bulk from hackers. Those hackers are very familiar with how to recover accounts from the Jagex website, pretending to be the original account owners. And once they had access to the account, they would log in, sell all the RuneScape items for gold, and then sell that gold for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or other fiat currency. But after that account was stripped clean of its wealth, what next? It's not like these hackers want to play on their newfound accounts, as they're only interested in how much profit they can extract from each one. So they sell the accounts. To people that run massive bot farms, to people that need high level accounts to scam and lure, to spam bots that advertise phishing links, and as we're talking about right now, to dupers. Now these dupers need to control thousands of accounts in order to cause a world crash. So they spend a long time accumulating hundreds of login credentials. It could even take them months to get all the accounts they need. Then they program a bot script to log in all the accounts and make their way to the same location within RuneScape. And after they have a handful of accounts with very wealthy save states, they get their 2000 accounts to assemble in the same area and do tons of emotes to stress out the server. Stress out the server for long enough and you've orchestrated a world crash. The world crashes and all of the original accounts are disconnected connected from the server with save states that say they have the original items in their inventory. And after a few minutes, they log back in on another world. Then they offload the GP to gold buyers. Easily hundreds of bills, even trillions were sold and used to bet against Bitcoin in 50-50 stakes. 
The dupes resulted in potentially upwards of a million dollars in profit across all the instances in which they occurred, probably four or five times from November 2019 to May 2020. But they were really bad for the RuneScape economy and how all of us players perceived Jagex and the game. It's demotivating to have a few players cause a huge spike of inflation in your game. Achievements and progress are devalued. Competing for ranks and prestige becomes stale. It took them a long time, many months in fact, but Jagex finally figured out a way to update the save states so a server crash can't be used to make money like this ever again. I'm against all kind of real world trade and duping activity, but this story is interesting enough to share it with all of you. Well, what about the magical dice dupe? It was patched one week after dupers discovered it. Jagex must have figured something was up and fixed the issue pretty quickly, so props to them for catching it. Anyway, I haven't been uploading as much because I've been starting up a new channel. It's called RuneScape Chronicles. It's inspired by the Chris Archie videos of old, and I think you'll really enjoy my little mini documentary on a day in the life of skill specs. It's one of the most hilarious videos I've ever uploaded, with much credit to skill specs himself. That is on screen right now, so go ahead and click it to laugh your pants off. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you over there. You have some of the best abilities I've seen in a Stage human right? being. I strive to be like you one day. Keep it up, Torvesta.